Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs. I hope your preparation for the upcoming RBI grade B exam are going very well. The exam is going to be held on 9th July. Please keep preparing for your exam. Let's get started with today's video. So today the two topics that we're going to talk about is the first one is revised norms or instructions that are laid down by the RBI regarding general credit card, general credit card. And the second one is about NARCL. This is very, very, very important. It is not something new, but an information has come up about this. That is why we're going to revise this, but it is very important for your exam. A question in descriptive, even in ESI or in finance, both can be asked from NARCL or IDRCL. Okay, let's get started with the first topic. The first topic is about GCC, which is the general credit card. Before we have to understand what is this GCC scheme. Before let us have a look at something that you all already know. So I'm sure you all already know about PSL, Priority Sector Lending. PSL, Priority Sector Lending. Wherein banks have to give 40% of their adjusted net bank credit to weaker sections of the society or to priority areas, to priority sectors. Now these priority sectors, these priority sectors can be classified under various heads. For example, in education, agriculture loans, agriculture loans, education, housing, MSME, weaker sections of the society. So in sabke under, in sabko priority sector lending ke under, banks have to give credit to various sectors in the economy under the priority sector lending norms. Now, you might have also heard of KCC, which is Kisan Credit Card. Kisan Credit Card. Under this Kisans that are farmers, they can get loans through a credit card that they receive. So they can avail loans from various banks, from various RRBs as well, through a credit card that they get, which is the Kisan Credit Card. So similarly, the KCC, it, just like it is for the farm sector, it is for agriculture sector or farmers, we have various other credit cards for other sectors of society. For example, we have artisan credit card, artisan's credit card, artisan credit card, which is for artisans as the name suggests, or the Lagu Udyami card, which is for small entrepreneurs, right? So various Credit cards are issued or credit is given to various sectors under the PSL norms only. For example, MSME may be credit dena hota hai to entrepreneurs. So here we are focusing on non-farm entrepreneurs. Non-farm entrepreneurs. So this was the objective of the RBI for bringing GCC schemes, general credit card scheme. So that penetration of credit could be there to the non-farm entrepreneurial sector through issue of credit card in the form of probably debit card also. Okay. Now this was the objective. In 2013, financial inclusion plan jab bana tha, 2013 ki meeting mein it was discussed that it was observed that the banks are not showing the credit that they are giving to the non-farm entrepreneurial sector. So it was reported by banks, it was observed that the data reported by banks under the GCC, that is general credit card, is not showing the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial credit extended to various individuals, right? So to increase the penetration towards non-farm entrepreneurial sector, the scheme was revised again. Now, in order to enhance the coverage of GCC scheme, which is the general credit card scheme, to ensure that there is greater credit linkage for all productive activities within the overall PSL. Now, these uh, non-farm entrepreneurial activities or Credit is there under the PSL, Priority Sector Lending. A PSL ke under, we all know, MSME ko loan milta hai, weaker sections ko loan milta hai, for example, self-help groups ho gaye, ya artisans ho gaye, or other small entrepreneurs, right? They get working capital loan as well as term loans also, which is covered under the PSL guidelines. Now, these can be given through 
क्रेडिट कार्ड और जनरल क्रेडिट कार्ड स्कीम के अंदर ये इंक्लूडेड होंगे सो दैट वॉज द पर्पज ऑफ ब्रिंगिंग द जनरल क्रेडिट कार्ड स्कीम और टू एनहैंस द फ्लो ऑफ क्रेडिट टू वेरियस सेक्टर्स अंडर द जी सी सी स्कीम्स and so that banks can actually report the credit that they are giving to various sectors through credit card and this should be recorded or reported under the gcc scheme now there has been revisions or revised instructions under this gcc schemes which has been come up by the rbi i hope aapko gcc ka concept samajh aa gaya hoga under psl banks have to give loans to various sectors of the society but the sector that is the entrepreneurial sector especially the non farm entrepreneurial sector can be given loans through various credit cards this is enhanced or the coverage of loans to various sectors is enhanced in this gcc scheme which is now called as gcc facility okay so other credit cards like credit cards like artisan credit card lagu udyami sarozgar credit card and weavers credit card in existence and catering to the non farm entrepreneurial credit needs of individual should be included in the reporting of the credit card which is extended through the gcc so there are certain credit cards for example these the artisan credit card lagu udyami credit card which are extended to non farm entrepreneurial individuals or their needs both working capital needs as well as term loan needs now these should be reported under the gcc scheme that was the purpose that was the purpose of these guidelines when they were issued the yes now the th terms and conditions of the credit facility the terms and conditions of the credit facility is you know different for different banks and banks have a board approved policy for the terms and conditions jiske andar wo credit card dete hain so for example if a credit card is issued to any artisan what will be the terms and conditions of the credit card that he is holding or the loan that this person is getting this is as per the board approved policy this is as per the board approved policy of banks under the general guidelines of rbi so rbi has given broad guidelines or broad framework regarding the gcc rbi ne gcc ke under ek broad framework de diya hai and now based on this broad framework the board approved policy of every bank is different the board approved policy i am writing the ap board approved policies of various banks is different which contains the terms and conditions based on which these cards are issued okay <laughs> now the objective of the gcc scheme like i told you to enhance the credit facilities to non farm entrepreneurial sector as well and so that reporting can be done under the gcc scheme of rbi so the objective was to increase the flow of credit to individuals for entrepreneurial activity in the non farm sector all non farm entrepreneurial credit extended to individuals which is eligible under the psl is included in the gcc schemes so every non farm entrepreneurial credit which is included or eligible under the priority sector lending will come in the gcc scheme now any credit facility to the scheme would include both the working capital as well as term loan when we talk about working capital we mean the capital or the money that is required by any entrepreneur for day to day working to so, operations ke liye day to day operations ke liye for day to day operations whatever working capital is required the capital that is required for day to day operations by any entrepreneur that can be availed from banks the capital or the money that is required that can be availed in the form of working capital requirement or also term loan also so the credit facility can be in the form of working capital or term loans as well in the form of term loan requirements of entrepreneurs now this can be in the form of a smart card or debit card so debit card mein paise dalwa ke they can utilize it so the non farm entrepreneurs can avail this credit facility through smart card or debit cards which will be a biometric smart card compatible for use in atms and other swipe machines so smart card or debit card ke through this credit facility 
can be availed. Okay. Now there will be no ceiling on the loan amount. There is no ceiling on the loan amount. कितने का भी loan दे सकते हैं. However, the decision that is taken by the bank that किसको कितना credit देना है. Because obviously it cannot be an unlimited loan that a bank will give. So the decision will be on a case to case basis on the assessment of the risk. So which entrepreneur or which small or marginal you know entrepreneur can get or uh, avail how much credit under the scheme or under the PSL guidelines as well. That depends on case to case basis based on the risk assessment of that particular individual which is availing that loan. However, RBI has not given any ceiling amount ki aap itne tak ka hi loan de sakte ho. Because the RBI is focusing towards credit penetration to this sector or to the priority sector in general. So, now these GCC rules are general credit card rules. Now, there is certain revised instructions under this. Let us have a look at these. So, revised instructions are as follows. First of all, this GCC scheme will be called the general credit card facility. This GCC scheme will be called the general credit card facility. The instruction shall apply to all banks which can give credit cards. Now, which are these banks? The banks are Fidul commercial banks, all Fidul commercial banks, excluding, however, three types of banks are excluded. The first one is pay payment banks, state <coughs> cooperative banks, and district central cooperative banks. State cooperative banks and district central cooperative banks are excluded along with payment banks. Otherwise, all scheduled commercial banks can give loans through credit cards to various non-farm entrepreneurial uh, needs of individuals. Now, NBFCs are also included under this. NBFCs are also included under this. Now, individuals, entities, Sanctioned working capital facility for non-farm entrepreneurial activities which are eligible for classifying under the PSL may be issued general credit cards. So, if any individual or an entity which needs non-farm entrepreneurial loan for non-farm entrepreneurial activities, any individual or any entity which needs loan or credit for non-farm entrepreneurial agar ek small entrepreneur hai which needs you know uh, capital or credit for working capital requirement or even a term loan for operations in its business or entrepreneur hai wo then it can be and also it should be classified under the PSL PSL norms ke under aata hai now GCC that is general credit cards can be issued to them these were the broad guidelines and the few revised instructions were these ki sabse pehle this will be called general credit card facility from GCC scheme. After that, the instructions will be applicable to all banks which can issue credit cards. And the third one we know is that individuals or entities which are sanctioned to get working capital requirement for non-farm entrepreneurial activities and also these activities should be under the PSL guidelines can now be issued general credit card. Okay. Now, we are done with this. Ki 2013, ke it was decided that banks were not reporting. And after 2013, to have greater linkage for all productive activities, it was decided that banks report kare and thus PSL ke under jobhi non-farm entrepreneurial activities hai. Unke under agar aap loan dete hai, that can be given to GCC and that shall be reported under these guidelines. <coughs> okay, this brings us to the end of the first topic here. Let's have a look at the second topic NARCL. It is very important to know about NARCL. And isse pehle thoda dekh lete hai. What is a bad bank or why is there a need of bad bank? Okay. Now, we all know about banks. They face a lot of times, they face NPAs, non-performing assets. So, banks, 
At times, banks give indiscriminate lending or loans to various individuals, especially high net worth individuals without proper due diligence. So this is what we have observed that banks have done in the past. Even now, banks are doing that. They are lending indiscriminately to a lot of high net worth individuals, assuming that their net worth is very high and banks will be able to get a lot, you know, get their loan back. So they you know, they rely on indiscriminate lending because of which these assets of banks or loans of banks turn into non-performing asset or even stressed asset. Now, we stressed asset. Ki baat kar rahe. Stressed asset, mein we have we have NPAs, non-performing assets for which principal and interest has not been given for 90 days. That is the definition of NPA, non-performing asset. Under this, we also have restructured loans. Jiski, jiski terms and conditions ko restructure kara gaya hai by the bank to receive the loan. So a lot of times the terms and conditions of the loan are restructured by the bank. So for example, uh, an extension is given to the borrower for repayment of loan. Or kuch haircut amount de diya ki restructure kar do aap uske loan agreement ko or the terms and conditions are tweaked by the bank for repayment of the loan. So restructured loans and written off loans written off loans a lot of times after struggling to get the payment back on the loan banks you know after struggling for a lot of years they decide finally one year that they will write off this loan from their books of account ki ab hamari book of account mein kab tak ye bad loan ya fir ye non performing asset linger on karta rahega there has to be an end so, when banks decide to write off the loan from their books of account, which does not mean that loan maaf ho gaya, that means that it is not shown as an asset of the bank. So, it is a written off asset or a written off loan. So, stressed asset may we have NPAs, restructured loan, NPAs wherein principal and interest has not been received on a loan for 90 days. Then restructured loans, which terms and conditions ko bank change karta hai so that it can receive certain amount on that outstanding loan. And then we have written off assets, written off loans, which banks decide to write off from their books of account and this ko loss man leta hai bank apna. Now, these stressed assets of banks, which are loans that were given to banks, at times when they, you know, when these are converted into stressed asset or non-performing assets, and Banks, what they do is they sell it to a bank or a structure which is an asset reconstruction company. So there is a company known as an asset reconstruction company which is also called as a bad bank. Bad bank. This asset reconstruction company or a bad bank will buy this loan, will purchase this loan from the bank jo bank ke liye NPA ban gaya tha. So for the bank, this loan was an NPA, a not performing, non-performing asset. And this ARC or this bad bank will buy the loan or the asset NPA of the bank in certain amount of money, which is not the exact amount of the loan amount. So for example, if loan 100 crore ka hai, now this is an NPA for the bank, which means bank is unable to recover this 100 crore from the borrower. Bank will sell its NPA to a bad bank or an asset reconstruction company and the asset reconstruction company will either recover the loan through sale of assets of the borrower or it will further sell the loan to a third party. Now this is the function of the ARC to buy the bad loans of the banks. Now this is not bought by the ARC at 100 crore. A haircut is given on that. A haircut is given on that. Let's say 50% haircut ho gaya. The banks will only receive 50 crore on this loan. So the bank was eligible to receive 100 crore because 100 crore ka loan tha. But because it is a non-performing asset and because banks have decided to sell it to an asset reconstruction company or a bad bank, they will not receive the entire 100 crore. They will only receive after a haircut amount of let's say jitna bhi hai 50% ka haircut hua hai, they will receive in this case only 50 crore. Now, this is the function of a bad bank. What they do is they buy the assets or loans which are not performing or stressed asset of banks. 
एंड गिव बैंक द मनी अब इससे क्या होगा बैंक की बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट में या उनकी बैलेंस शीट में देर वर अ लॉट ऑफ एनपीएस विच वर लिंगरिंग फॉर फ्रॉम अ सर्टन नंबर ऑफ इयर्स विच विल नाउ बी रिटर्न ऑफ बिकॉज दे विल रिसीव सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ मनी फ्रॉम दिस बैड बैंक and now the the functioning or the focus of this ba- this bank which was now earlier on its npas jiski wajah se investment bhi nahi aa pati hai bahut bar banks mein and a lot of customers also do not place trust on these banks because of lingering npas now this can be you know avoided a situation like that can be avoided going forward और बैंक्स के बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट से ताकि ये एनपीएस हट जाए कस्टमर्स का ट्रस्ट वापस आ जाए इन्वेस्टर्स का ट्रस्ट वापस आ जाए दिस इज वन ऑफ द बेनिफिट्स दैट द बैंक्स गेट एंड अलोंग विद दैट सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ मनी व्हिच दे विल रिसीव आफ्टर सेलिंग दिस टू द बैड बैंक नाउ दिस वाज द फंक्शन ऑफ एसेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनी और अ बैड बैंक नाउ इट वाज डिसाइडेड इन द बजट 2021 उससे पहले ही डिस्कशन चल रही थी अबाउट ए आर सीज एंड दैट द गवर्नमेंट विल कम अप विद इट्स ओन बैड बैंक सो बजट 2021 के बाद इट वाज डिसाइडेड दैट एन ए आर सी एल द गवर्नमेंट विल फॉर्म नेशनल एसेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनी एन ए आर सी एल यस एन ए आर सी एल सो द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर अनाउंस्ड अबाउट the NARCL National Asset Reconstruction Company which will work as an asset reconstruction company which will purchase the NPAs of banks and give cash or money to banks against their NPAs theek okay? hai so the non performing assets of banks were you know lingering and it was decided ki ye jo NARCL banega NARCL which is a government backed government backed asset reconstruction company or a bad bank a huge bad bank it will work to recover loans more than 500 crore so banks ke jo more than 500 crore ke loan hai these will be bought by the arc now asset decide hua tha after 2021 that such huge loans such huge loans of more than 500 crore are up to the tune of 2 lakh crore दो लाख करोड़ के इतने लोन्स थे इन द टोटल यू नो इन द बैंकिंग सेक्टर व्हिच वर टू बी ब्रॉट बाय बॉट बाय द एन ए आर सी एल सो इट वाज डिसाइडेड दैट लोन्स अप टू टू लाख करोड़ विल बी बॉट बाय द एन ए आर सी एल इन फेजेस ठीक है नाउ अब एन ए आर सी एल ये हमने पढ़ लिया ये हमने समझ लिया इट इज फॉर द रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ ह्यूज एन ह्यूज एन for the resolution of huge npas it was decided to form narcl <coughs> now the narcl received the narcl was incorporated under the companies act and it received license from the rbi to work as an arc asset reconstruction company now rbi gives license to companies to work as an asset reconstruction company under the surfazy act so under the surfazy act rbi gives license to companies to work as an arc asset reconstruction company now narcl ka function humne samajh liya national asset reconstruction company it is a government backed company which will work like a bad bank and assets of more than 500 crore will be taken by taken over from the banking sector by this narcl and further they will manage these assets and they will be able to sell this asset going forward now the question comes will bank receive the entire amount of loan by this narcl to kya ye narcl it will pay the entire amount of loan let's say ek bank ka 200 crore ka loan hai and this asset वैसे तो 500 करोड़ से ज्यादा है बट जस्ट फॉर दिस एग्जांपल लेट्स टेक 200 करोड़ का लोन है एक बैंक का एंड दिस एनआरसीएल डिसाइड्स टू टेक ओवर दिस लोन और टू बाय दिस लोन एंड आफ्टर अ हेयर कट ऑफ 50% इट डिसाइड्स टू गिव द बैंक 100 करोड़ नाउ विल दिस 100 करोड़ बी गिवन इमीडिएटली टू द बैंक नो इट विल बी डिवाइडेड इन टू पार्ट्स एंड 15% ऑफ इट 15% ऑफ इट विल बी गिवन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अपफ्रंट cash by cash we do not mean that actual cash mein milega it means you know unke bank mein milega bank ke bank account mein right so which means it is just an upfront amount so 15% immediately mil jayega and the rest 85% will be in the form of security receipt 
the rest 85 will be in the form of security receipt. So in this case, 15 crore banks will get in the form of upfront payment. That is generally, uh, you know, cash me. Isko hum bolte hai ki 15% cash me milega, which means 15% will be an upfront payment. And the rest 85% will be in the form of security receipts. Okay, ek receipt mil jayegi. Further, jab NARCL isko sell kar dega, is bad uh, asset ko, NPA ko. When it will be able to sell the non-performing asset, then it can give this 85% ka security receive and the payment will be given to bank going forward. So immediately 15 crore ki or 15% ka payment milega, that is cash and the rest 85% is given in the form of a security receipt. Okay. Now, jo ye NARCL hai, what is the ownership of this NARCL? So, the government or the public sector banks, PSB, public sector banks will hold 51% share in the NARCL and the rest will be by the private sector banks or financial institutions. 49% is by the private sector bank or financial institutions and 51% is under the public sector banks, 51% of the holding. Now already they are, there are a lot of ARCs and there were around 28 ARCs working in the, you know, in the economy. But still the government decided that NARCL, which will be back by the government will be brought up. Now, what will be the benefit of this? First, this will sort out problems of, you know, huge assets. So assets worth 500 crore, assets worth above 500 crore will be resolved by these NARCL, which were huge in number when the initial calculation was done. So bought around 2 lakh crore ka loan tha, which was there in the economy in various banks, right? The total of that. And secondly, this NARCL will be guaranteed by the government. So government ne ek corpus banaya, which is of the amount of 30,600 crore. This was the corpus or the guarantee given by the government that in case, in case the NARCL is unable to sell the bad loan, then it can recover the amount or get the amount from this corpus of 30,600 crore. Okay. In case the NARCL is unable to recover the amount or unable to sell the bad asset and pay the bank, then it can get it from this corpus of 30,600 crore. Now, the bad bank structure banaya tha government ne, the government created a bad bank structure. This mein two entities, see there were two entities, NARCL and IDRCL. So the NARCL, which was responsible for acquisition of loan, acquisition of loan, giving 15% in cash and 85% in security received. That was the uh, purpose of NARCL. Similarly, IDRCL, IDRCL, India Debt Resolution Company Limited, IDRCL. This was formed by the government. Now, this organization was responsible to sell the assets. It was responsible to sell the assets. So, once these, once these assets are acquired by the NARCL, the function will be with the IDRCL to sell the required asset, right? <coughs> Under this IDRCL, 49% ownership will be with the public sector banks and 51% with the private sector banks. Okay. Public sector will hold 49% and private sector will hold 51%. Now, so the IDRCL will be working towards managing the assets or selling the assets. So it will have taking take, uh, take over or turn around professionals and experts working under this, which will function at selling or managing the assets. Okay? That is the function of IDRCL and NARCL was responsible for NARCL was responsible for acquisition of assets. Okay. Now, NARCL will first purchase the bad loan from bank, will pay 15% in cash and 85% in the form of securities. Then when the asset is sold with the help of IDRCL, the commercial banks will be paid back the rest. Joki rest 85% amount hai, they will be paid back once it is sold. Now, in case they are unable to sell the bad bank or the bad loan, then the guarantee of the government, which is a guarantee for five years, so government ne ye corpus 5 year ke liye diya hai for a period of 5 years. This 30,600 crore ka corpus is 
can be utilized to give the banks to give to make payment to the bank okay now why is this narcl in news let us have a look at that and ab thodi aapko news bhi acche se samajh aayegi now the narcl which is supported by the government it was expected ki financial year 23 mein 50000 crore ke assets wo acquire karenge this was the target 50000 crore ke assets they will be able to acquire in fy23 however till march 2023 they were only able to acquire loan to the amount of 10378 crore from three major stressed asset that is from jp infratech ssa international and helios photovoltaic we do not have to remember the names but just that the jp infratech jp infratech was the first uh, you know huge stressed asset which was acquired by the narcl in this jp infratech idbi bank had ye to the jp infratech ka jo loan tha it was around 9200 ka loan and the major portion of the major lender was idbi bank idbi bank around 3600 crore ka loan was given by the idbi bank more than 30 around 3700 crore ka loan was given by the idbi bank and this was the very first acquisition by this narcl in january 2022 now up the reason i am including this is for you to understand is for you to understand ki kaise payment hui hai to the idbi bank and the actual functioning of narcl so it was decided ki narcl ka, uh, jo idbi bank tha their exposure to this particular you know uh, company jp infrast infratech so their exposure to the company was 3750 crore however after a certain haircut it will be given 1685 87 crore 1687 crore and 15% of this will be received in cash which is 253 crore and the rest that is 1434% will be in the form of security receipt so this is the practical example which has happened this time that is why i have included this however the numbers are not important for your exam this is everything about narcl and idrcl please go through this once because it is very important for your exam it can also be asked in descriptive okay let's come to the questions what is the ceiling amount on loan for the purpose of non farm entrepreneurial activity and is otherwise eligible and it is eligible for classification as psl so jo loan amount hai there is no upper limit or ceiling limit however it is decided on case to case basis under this please write about gcc under this general credit card so there is no upper limit or no ceiling uh, it will be decided on case to pay case to case basis based on the risk assessment of the individual so no limit which of the following statement is are correct about the new bad bank structure narcl has received license from rbi to function as arc this is correct public sector banks will remain 51% ownership will maintain 51% ownership in narcl this is correct narcl has received 30600 crore guarantee to back the security receipt this is also correct by the from the government okay again a question about the new bad bank structure is new bad bank structure mein we have two companies which is narcl and idrcl india debt resolution company limited NRCL will pay 15% of the agreed amount in security receipt and remaining 85% in the form of cash this is an incorrect statement the government guarantee is extended for 25 years no for 5 years IDRCL will aim to sell the stressed asset in the market this is correct which of the following is included in weaker section weaker section under PSL small and marginal farmers we are talking about weaker section here this is correct artisans village cottage industries where individual credit limits do not exceed 1 lakh this is correct included in weaker sections and self help groups again correct so all of the above here are correct right this was the last question for today i hope you enjoyed the session please padte rahiye aapka exam is very near all the best for your preparation and your exam thank you